Coming up on Inspiration Today, David Cirillo welcomes Perry Stone as he shares his insightful teaching on the code of the priest. Because the ultimate sacrifice would not be a priest's blood, but would be Jesus. Stay with us. Hello and welcome to Inspiration Today. I'm David Cirillo and we're in the midst of an incredible week of teaching and prophetic revelation with Perry Stone. He's been using his study and knowledge of Old Testament scripture and Jewish history and the prophetic word to unlock the code of the priesthood. So please help me welcome back author, teacher, international prophetic preacher, speaker, my friend Perry Stone. Hey Perry. Hey. Hey, that list was getting long there. I'll tell you what, it's a long list. <laughs> that list was getting long. <laughs> most important. I thought, what's going to come up next? <laughs> that's the, the end is the most important, <laughs> yes, my sir. friend. Well, I, and that's, how, that's the way that our family feels about you. What a, and what a great network. Thank well, God for you. Thank you. For, for just carrying the burden of it. Well, and, you know, I don't carry it alone. I Lots know. of good people. Lots of good folks Lots out Lots of good there, folks dude. are here. And you know, if you are tuning in for the first day this week, Perry and I have been having a great week. He's been doing most of the talking. I'm doing most of the listening. I won't let him say, I won't let him say anything. I'm going yes. to school here, and I hope you're getting ready to also. Well, we have been talking about, let's just do a real brief summary here, how that there is a temple in heaven, how that the angels were created to worship God. One of the angels, Lucifer, who was a cherub, fell, took one-third of the angels with him at the fall, and how that heaven not only has a temple, but it has sacred furniture like the ark and the golden altar. Um, and the let me interrupt. And the furniture in the temple here was made to pattern after. You're probably going to say the, that, but I got to right. say something. No, <laughs> yeah, you need to was, say something. Was patterned after what Moses saw in heaven. That's right. And so what Moses saw on the mountain is a picture of heaven. He yes. tapped into heaven, yeah. and that's how he built the tabernacle. We talked about how God hid the blood from the angels. He never told them about the blood. He never told the angels about the plan of redemption. And I believe God did not do that because He did not want it to be interrupted. He wanted to keep it a mystery hid from the foundation of the world. And then we got a little bit into the seed of the woman, how there was a prediction of the seed of the woman, which a woman doesn't have a seed. A woman has the egg and the man has the seed. So the seed is the Word of God and how that the redemption would come by the Word being made flesh. Now, who is the Word made flesh? Well, Jesus, of See, course. See there, I let you get a word in, you didn't get, I? You let me get something. <laughs> Okay, now today what we're going to do is we <laughs> I'm going to, he's going to laugh I, on I, me I here. I forgive you, Perry. It's all right. <laughs> we're going to, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit not just about the tabernacle because we mentioned that the Jewish people, God used Moses and the Hebrew people to create on earth what was in heaven, which is a heavenly temple. Mm -hmm. And he built a pattern of it on earth, which was the tabernacle of Moses. Now, in the tabernacle of Moses, God instructed Moses in the book of Exodus to put together a series of garments, various types of garments that would be uh, worn by men, which would be called priests. Now, what I'd like to do here, in fact, we'll just kind of do this from memory. We'll go back to the linen garment first. You want to go ahead and start sure. this? And we'll go back here. David's got his notepad. He has about, how many pages of notes do you I got. I've got at least a dozen pages of notes he, here. He watches the tapes and then he gets these questions, you know. We, have, we well, haven't got yeah, to any I'm of them. I'm not even past the first page. I'm going to leave my notes <laughs> This right is here. our third day. <laughs> he hasn't even gotten to one question yet. Oh my. All right. This is what was called the linen garment. Now, all of the priests in the temple, whether it be the tabernacle of Moses, the temple of Solomon, or the temple of Herod, which is the one that existed in Jesus' day, wore the white garments. Now, the only time that that color changed was when they were going to do a huge sacrifice. Sometimes they would put on the color red. This is in Jewish tradition. It's not in the New Te Old Testament because there would be so much blood covering mm -hmm. it. But uh, traditionally, they always wore the linen garment. Now, the lady who made this for me uh, uh, is from Tennessee. 
and she did some research on just the linen itself and found out that there's various types of linen. There's some that's lower quality, there's some that's extreme high quality. It appears that the priest would have wore the very, very high quality linen. And according to some research, it probably came out of the area of Egypt or that vicinity because that particular type of linen has a little bit of a water content too. In other words, when this garment would become stained it could be washed, and then by the washing, it would become clean again. Hmm. And that has to do with all the molecules, and we don't have the time to get sure. into that. But what the priest would basically do is he would have on a, a, lin a linen pair of pants. And I don't know if this fella has his, his pants Doesn't on look today. like he has his britches oh, on. Oh, he does. There oh, they does are. He? Yes. There they are. Can, you, right. can we get a picture of that there? There's the linen pants, okay? All the priests wore the linen pants. Actually, there's four parts to the garment. Then they have the outer robe, which you see here, which goes all the way down to the wrist and all the way down to the ankles. Now, we're from a, a, a traditional holiness background. Our family is if we go back to the 20s and 30s and 40s. And you know, the holiness people years ago would always tell the women wear the uh, uh, sleeves to here and the, the long dresses. Right. And one of the reasons they would do that is because of the Old Testament admonition about the priest wearing the garment. And they would say, uh, as it says in the Old Testament, that the priest was not allowed to show his uh, Ankles. Uh, his ankles. He had to cover his ankles. Thank you. You're helping me out here. I'm, I'm getting plung tie here. <laughs> You're helping me out here. here. And so when the priest, uh, one of the reasons for that, let me explain it to the people just yeah. from the priestly perspective, is that the altar had a ramp going up it. And so the priests were co constantly going up and down that ramp, dealing with the fire. Putting uh, on the put, sacrifices. Putting on the sacrifices. The and so that ramp would have been about this high. So God didn't want him in a short garment where people right. on the outside who were worshipers would be looking at the legs of the person. Right. And of course, my wife and I both feel if a person's in public ministry, they have to dress very carefully when they're on stage. And that should really be a lesson to whether they be male or female, to, to dress to where they right. don't draw attention to, the, to right. the physical part of them, that people see the, the Christ in them. And there right. is a principle there, right. to be honest with you. But anyway, this is the, that's, that's the little holiness lesson there, I guess, for <laughs> traditional holiness lesson. But the priest, this is the, the, the type of garment garment that he wore. And then he wore this headband, which was tied in the back. And the reason he did that is because it would catch the sweat. You know, athletes today wear a headband when they're uh, working out or when they're football players, basketball players, and it keeps the sweat from coming into the eyes because sweat has salt. And once it, get, it gets into the eyes, what do you do? Well, here's what you do. You start rubbing. Well, these priests are carrying animals. The animals have blood on them. They've got blood on their hands. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, God does not need them to sweat and perspire. And this is why the, the Bible said not to wear the wool and linen together. Because if a priest were to put wool and linen together, uh, the combination of that, like in, in certain, well, you don't wear a wool sweater uh, during the summer. Right. I mean, it's just unbearable if you wore one. So this, li this linen is very breathable. So in other words, the priest would cover his head for two reasons. Number one, so the sweat would not get in his eyes or the sweat would not go into to the bucket of blood because the blood had to stay purified and sanctified. No spit, no sweat, nothing of that nature mixing with the blood and also because of the hairs on his head. God wanted that sacrifice to have nothing connected with a human in it. And if a hair dropped in it, it would be the piece, you know, human right. hair. If sweat dropped in it, it would be human sweat or saliva. I said the Tennessee word a moment ago, spit. The, the, the dignified word is saliva for you folks who are more uh, dignified. And so the point is that this garment was the garment commonly worn by the priest. Now watch this. This belt is so long that if you, you the, the, the lady that made this and, and did the research on how long the belt was, and I don't have my notes here, uh, but this is a huge belt. Uh, I mean, if, we, if we undid it, it would probably, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong on this, but it seems to me this belt is about 40 feet long, all right? And she could not figure out how did they tie this belt. So she began to do research and found out that when you tie this belt to where it actually drapes, can we get a picture, right at the toes of the priest. In other words, the priest don't want to trip on it. It has to be right about right. there. Look how many knots there are. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven knots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven knots that are tied in that belt. Seven is the number of perfection, the number of completion. And the reason that you tie this belt here is because here is the holy and the loins would be profane in the flesh sense. The heart and the loins. Right. And so there's a separation here of seven knots between the holy and the profane. Oh. See, everything that God established for these men to do, he had a reason for it that was not just spiritual but practical, such as the bonnet keeping the sweat, the blood, or the sweat and the hair uh, from coming into. In fact, if this man were offering a sacrifice in the time of uh, Solomon 
or uh, the time of uh, uh, Herod, where the temple was uh, on the platform in Jerusalem, and he cut his finger, he would have to leave that bucket with another priest, that bucket of blood, rush out to an underground chamber and take care of the wound mm. before he was ever permitted to go back on the Temple Mount platform. Because you know as well as I do, when they're cutting as much as they were, they were going to cut their fingers sure. and going to have places. We do that today in a kitchen, you know, sure. not we. Maybe my wife does. She does the cooking. Uh, and, and so a person that cooks a lot will cut their finger because they deal with a knife a lot. Uh, I won't say they cut it a lot, but they, it can happen. Well, these guys every day were, were cutting the back part of a of a lamb or a ram, and 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 they had slaughter. There was a slaughterhouse. There was place places on the Temple Mount, 24 uh, rings where they would tie animals during, for example, Passover to catch the blood. But God did not want human blood intermingling with the animal blood. So we've got to keep that in mind because the only blood that would ever be from a person would be Jesus. Mm -hmm. And God wanted no other blood ever mingled with the blood of the animal throughout the whole covenant because the ultimate sacrifice would not be a priest's blood, but would be Jesus. Now, Perry, before we yeah. leave the priest's garment, uh, and I know somebody's worked very hard to make this an yes. accurate replica right. and representation, right. but you taught a little bit, and I'd like you to bring this out just a, mm -hmm. a touch. You taught a little bit about the, the collar that was on the robe of the priest. Okay, well, that's this one over here. Okay. And that's, on, that's on the high priest. Okay, and what about yeah. the... Uh, the notch that was in the robe. Is that on the high priest's robe right. also? You want to come over here? Sure. And, and, I'm getting right, ahead we're, of we're you. I'm this, sorry. Well, no, see, that's, mm -hmm. this, uh, this is the way I like it. I like, I like for you to bring up these questions because the iron sharpens iron. You get me stirred and I get David stirred and then hopefully because the people get stirred. Because there's some real significance there, especially sure there when is. you get to Caiaphas. And we, you've, oh. you've got to get into the we, story well, about Caiaphas. When we show this, then we'll be able to talk okay. about that because then right. people will know what we're talking about. Now, this garment here, is different, as you can tell, from the previous garment. The previous garment was a linen garment of four parts. Now, that garment we just showed you was the garment of the regular Levite, or what we'd call priest. These were the men that chopped the wood. These were the men that helped bring the offerings. These were the men that helped offer the offerings. These were the men that cleaned the Trimmed ashes. the lamps and filled Yeah, them these with were oil. the workers. Mm -hmm. can, can you imagine working uh, with ashes from an altar, working with olive oil? Because if you've ever seen olive oil, one drop of it stains. Sure the blood of an animal in a white garment, in a white garment. But see, that white represents righteousness. And that's the whole issue. We've got to understand that even the colors mean things. Now, this is probably a very accurate uh, description of what a high priest garment was like. Now, this was taken from different sources. Uh, the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, and I think it's um, templeinstitute.org if I can just mention that because they are the ones that have a lot of the research. You know, if people would be interested just in a, you know, a picture like this. I think they have a picture like this on their website. But the point is this. If we look at this garment, we have several different aspects of it. Now, this is the high priest garment. He alone can wear this. That man who is from the inner court or outer court cannot wear this. This man who is the high priest, and there's a differentiation on how many um, priests actually existed from Aaron to the time of Jesus. Uh, the number that I seem to come up with as far as research is about 86 priests up to the high time. Priest. Hi, yes, high priest up to the time of the destruction of the temple. Now, there, mm -hmm. were, there were thousands of Levites. Right. But, you know, Aaron had a son, and his son had a son, and his son had a son, and his son had a and, son. And the high priesthood was passed down from father to That's son right. generationally. And you, you exited it either when God sent a judgment, if God sent a judgment on you, which he did like, to Aaron's like Eli sons. Eli and his sons. That's and right. They died early. Right. They didn't get to finish it. Right. So some, uh, some priests were judged early. But if you lived out your days, you were to die and you hand the secrets over to your oldest son who would be a priest. Uh, one of the secrets would be how to pronounce the name of God, yod He vav He, which is, by the way, uh, this is a Lamed and a Yud, but yod He vav He is on this side of his crown right here. And what this says is Kodesh La Yahweh, which is holy to the Lord. That's like saying holy unto God or holy to the Lord. And that is on the crown. So the, here's the garment of the priest. He wore the gold crown, which says holy to God. He had uh, a bonnet, again, covering his head because remember, he's ministering at the temple with these men. He's not allowed to sweat into or drop hair into the blood that's being offered. Then we have actually uh, several layers of garments here. In fact, can we start at the bottom? I, I guess we'll start at the bottom here. We have an inward garment, 
which is white, again, which is white linen. And then we have a blue garment that has bells and pomegranates at the bottom of it. And then we have this outer ephod garment, which is uh, basically the, the color that you're looking at here. And it would have different uh, colors and designs like the purple, the blue, and the red combined in it. Then we have the breastplate of the priest. Now, there's so, there, I mean, I could spend a program just on this, but we won't. We're only going to give the highlights. So you need to understand you're only going to get just a few of the highlights here. A couple points to bring out. Number one is when the Temple Institute, and the reason I gave them some acknowledgement is because uh, of the research they're actually doing with the literal garments to, to, to help reinstitute the building of the temple in Jerusalem one day. But when you go to the institute, you'll discover that this garment right here is sewn in one piece. It is, it is a garment that's seamless. The whole, and the whole garment. I mean, it literally is seamless. And you say, how did you do this? And they said, well, it took a lot of study. However, it's mentioned in one of the Jewish writings that there were, there were, there were we would say today, a kite or diamond shape. You know what a kite looks like, sure. you know? Like a diamond. Like, yeah, like a diamond, like this, if I can draw it out. And th th those designs are all over this garment. So I asked the, the young student at the Institute, I said, why is it that this garment has this shape on it? And he says, all we know is there's supposed to be a part of the human body that has that shape that was handed down by tradition all the way back in the time of Aaron and we just know we're supposed to make it that way. I said, so you don't know what it is? He said, no, I'm not sure, certain. So I come home and I start researching and I find out there's two parts of the human body. You ready for this? I'm ready. When a baby is newborn, the top of the head is in that shape called the soft spot. Hmm. Number two, the and I, I had a the doctor. The crown of the head. The crown of the head. There you now, go. You, okay, you know where I'm going with this. I had a doctor then email me because he heard me teach this, that the chamber of the heart, if you take the heart and cut it in half, hmm. Do you know it's this shape here? It's the shape of the letter Sheen, which is the letter for God's name. And there is a chain, and I'm not a doctor, so there are do probably doctors watching who m know much more about how to explain this. But there is a uh, place in the heart, a, valve, a valve of some kind, that's in that diamond shape. Huh. And I had a medical doctor from Louisiana share that with me, and I thought, oh my goodness. Now here we've got two things in the human body. When a baby is born, and, when a, and, and the head and the heart. Mm -hmm. Wow, he is the head of Israel to take people to God, and he is to carry the heart of God to the people. And that may be, that's my explanation, but I think it's the best explanation you can a find. A lot of symbolism and mystery God put even in something as simple as the clothes that they wore. Exactly, and the design of it. And the pomegranate. Yeah, period. now this is interesting here because at the bottom of the garment, I don't know if people at home can hear that, okay? The Bible says that they put a pomegranate. Now, the reason a pomegranate is considered to be a holy fruit is because a pomegranate, and I, I, believe me, I tried to do this one time <laughs> and I totally failed. <laughs> they claim that if you get a huge mature pomegranate, it's got 613 seeds in it. Well, I tried to count them one time and got so hungry I ate the thing, so I never <laughs> got to finish my count. Never tried to count that. But the reason that's important is in the Jewish religion, there are 613 deeds and commands that the Jewish people are to obey in the first five books of Moses that were written in the wilderness. So the pomegranate became a holy fruit. Now, this is just a, a plastic replica, but can you see what a pomegranate looks like? It has a crown on top of it. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the, it's one of the few uh, fruits in the world, there are a few, but that's one of the few in the world that has a crown on top. So in, the, in Solomon's temple, he put two columns on the outside one on the left and one on the right as you come into the doors, and he put pomegranates on top, and the pomegranates would have faced up and had that crown on the top, on the, on the top yeah. of it. Now, the reason you have bells is because so his sound will be heard in going into the holy place. Mm -hmm. And see, the tradition was, and again, this is only a tradition because there's no, nothing in the Bible about this, is that on Yom Kippur, at a certain point when the priest would go in early in the morning, that they would tie a, a rope to his leg. And someone says, I had another Jewish man says that couldn't be true because the priest on Yom Kippur, this is important, took off these garments and put on the linen garment, which is absolutely true. And the Bible brings this out. And he had to wear the linen when he went into the uh, Holy of Holies and could not wear this one when he first went in. And the reason being, according to, again, we have to go to Jewish writings here, is because on this garment there's gold. Th this actually, uh, the original one was gold. The border here was gold. The crown was made of gold. And because the breastplate and the crown had gold in it, God remembered the sin of the golden calf that Israel 
when Moses was in his presence, mm -hmm. Israel sinned with gold, with the golden calf. Mm -hmm. So God made the priest take the gold off when he went into the Holy of Holies so that uh, it has to go something to do with the golden calf. But let me go. Let me ask you another question. I yeah. know you're on a roll here, but oh, yeah. I'm, I have to correct some you, of my thinking here. Okay. Was there another place that the priest offered sacrifices where he had this, these garments on other than the Holy of Holies? Okay. Tell you where I'm getting to. Okay. You can tell me, Dave, you, what, you, what you thought all your life is wrong, or you can say, oh, yeah, that's right. Because I heard from other Jewish writings, right. not heard but have read, that one of the ways the children of Israel knew that their offering and their sacrifice was acceptable to God was that God's presence and His power would come down upon the high priest so forcibly that He would would shake under the presence and power of God, and his yeah. bells well, would ring. Well, it says in the yeah, it says would, in the book of Exodus that his noise will be heard. Make the golden bells that his noise would be heard in the holy place. And that lets you know that your offering yeah, and that's was the reason, accepted. And that's the reason why there was a tradition that developed. Now, there again, there's a debate because we know, and of course, I was reading the other day that on Yom Kippur, he would change garments five times. He would go to this one, back to this one, to that one, back to this one, to this one, back to that one. But when he went into the Holy of Holies, he went in with linen. Once he came out, he would change and go back into the inner, the outer and the inner court. But there seemed, definitely the bells were for the noise. Now watch this. The pomegranate is fruit. There's nine fruits of the Spirit. Yes. Say, the bells are your worship. But notice this, that between your worship, you have to have fruit. Amen. <laughs> In other words, if that's, you just That's a good word right there yeah, for a lot of Christians Absolutely. Today. If you just worship and you walk out of the building and have no fruit, then what good, then are, what good, what good are you in the presence of God? Amen. But if you have for the fruit of the Spirit, the joy, the long-suffering, the, te the, the meekness, the temperance, to deal with people, right. deal with your problems, and you worship, then you have the completeness mm -hmm. of what the, the priest And the Lord said, had. by our fruits we, we be known. Yeah. Now, one more quick thing, right. and I don't have a lot of time to, to talk about this, but right in here, okay, is God's name. Hmm. Okay, there was a pouch called the Urim and the Thummim. Remember that? I do. And uh, the, it's believed to be one of two things: either there was a pocket with two stones on it, or this this was a part of this. And so the priest would put his hands and begin to pray to inquire of the Lord. And when he would pull out this a certain way, it would mean a yes or a no. Hmm. And that's how that's one of the ways that he inquired of the Lord. So this is the priest's garments. Now we've only covered uh, a, a little, little bit, bit of what's really. Uh, much, much more to cover. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> we're learning an awful lot on the program, and I hope that you're learning a lot through this week. Be sure to stay tuned for more with our good friend Perry Stone right after this brief message. Friends, this DVD is destined to become a favorite in your home library. That is, if you can keep your friends from borrowing it long enough. Please, don't wait. Call now with your seed. And when you call with your seed, we'll rush you a DVD of Perry's entire teaching series on the Code of the Priest. You say, Dave's seed. What is that? Your seed is your offering. You know, when you release the seed that's in your hand, God releases the harvest that's in His hands. God has a harvest that He's trying to get into all of our lives, in our family, our finances, our physical bodies, our spiritual lives. But the only way God can get the harvest into our lives, the only way something ever leaves heaven is when something leaves the earth. When our seed leaves our hand, God's harvest leaves His hands. Well, sow your seed today. And I believe that as you do, and as you watch these tapes, you're going to discover how the hidden meanings in the priesthood affect the way that we can live and worship God today. This is an exciting revelation. We've only been able to scratch, believe me, not even the surface as Perry's been teaching this week. But I believe this understanding will change what you see that Jesus did for you. So please call now. If it's more convenient, log on to our website at insptoday.com. You can sow your seed there and receive the code of the priest on DVD. So Perry, quickly, what are we going to Try right, to we, try to talk about we're tomorrow. We're going to tomorrow talk about how it, how the, at the Jordan River, the priesthood was transferred from Aaron to Melchizedek, the day that John baptized Jesus. The other we, way around. Yeah, Jesus baptized John. John baptized Jesus. From what I say. From Aaron to Melchizedek. Oh, from Mel. From Melchizedek to Aaron. You've got so oh, much we'll, swimming we'll do, around in we'll your get, head. We'll today. figure it out. All right, we'll figure it out. My brain cells are stirred <laughs> up. We'll figure it out. Friends, <laughs> but please, we're going to talk about it. Gonna, it's <laughs> going to be exciting, especially when we get into the story about Caiaphas. Yes. Yes. Well, friends, please be sure to join us tomorrow. Tell a friend. This is exciting teaching. It's the kind of teaching that's worth getting on the phone, calling a friend or a loved one, and saying, hey, you've got to tune in for this. Well, we'll see you tomorrow right here on Inspiration Today with more with Perry Stone and the Code 
to the priest. God bless you. This program was brought to you by Inspiration TV. Help us share the inspiration. And you can support our mission online at inspiration.org forward slash give. Or call us at 800-517-6202. U.S. only. Thank you and God bless you.